Hello, this is Chef Marcus Giuliano, and I'm your chef on a mission. Today's mission is salmon, and uh, love to talk about salmon. A lot of people aren't really sure what they're eating. Wild, Canadian, Alaskan, farmed, wild Atlantic. It gets very confusing. So I just want to keep making these videos to educate people. And here's a great question from YouTube. So the question is from Flozen Flux. Hi, Marcus. Are all farmed salmon just as bad as Norwegian salmon? For example, Tasmanian and Scottish salmon. Okay, so are all salmon as bad as Norwegian? Here's the quick answer on this. The salmon that are bad are the salmon that are raised in pens, the salmon that are, um, that are in feedlots, in the ocean, in bays. Those are the bad salmons. And I got to tell you, 99.5%, 99.9, um, the majority are those kinds of salmons. That's just the way it is. So it's called uh, open pen farming. Open pen farming is where you take a massive nets with a structure on them, you drop them in the ocean, and you throw the fish in there. And this pen is out in a bay in the ocean in the water, well, as the salmon excrete, and as you throw food in there, and the waste from the salmon and the disease from the salmon spreads out into the ocean, into the bays, and pollutes. The salmon, the salmon, average salmon farm, that is the uh, pollutes the equivalent to a city of the population of like 10,000 people. So imagine 10,000 people and imagine all the sewage and waste that goes into the treatment plant every day. Imagine just dumping that into the ocean and just letting it sit there and pile up. Well, that's the problem with salmon farming, is it's it's a, it's it's a it's an open pen. So so whatever the salmon are producing, just goes right out into the environment. It spreads into the wild. Uh, all the diseases spread to the wild. A lot of salmon farms are placed in the migratory path of wild, uh, wild salmon, which means that the wild salmon swim by these. Um, Chile, of course, is not in the migratory path, and neither is uh, the salmon's not a sa enough salmon. Salmon is only a North American fish. Sure, they tried to transplant it into uh, New Zealand, I believe. And there are some salmon down there, but they're not native down there. And it's not like a success story or anything. But yeah, they, they threw some down there to see, see what would happen. But salmon typically is a North Atlantic, uh, a Northern Hemisphere fish. So the whole band of the Atlantic Ocean from America all the way over to Scotland, Norway, England. Um, and then on the West Coast, uh, Northern Hemisphere, the whole band of Pacific Ocean, from Alaska all the way to Russia, down into China, you can find wild uh, Pacific salmon. Alaska being the king of the salmon fisheries because they have the best managed system. So, Atlantic is automatically farm-raised. Okay, so as soon as you see that, uh, you, as soon as you see the word Atlantic, automatically say uh, it's automatically farm-raised. So now back to, is Scottish better than Norwegian? It's open, all open penned. Now, the reason uh, or the solution for the salmon farms to stop spreading and spewing this waste into the, into the wild is something called a closed containment system. It costs about seven times as much, so uh, $7 million versus $1 million for the investment. And that's the salmon that um, I guess is going to be the best bet. It is the best bet if you're going to eat farm salmon. There's a farm in British Columbia called Kutera. There used to be one called, I think, Rainbow Falls or something. There used to be one inland in the Washington state. I don't think they're around anymore. So what happens is they have these big, massive tanks, these pools, these tanks. The salmon are in there. And you can go on Kutera, K-U-T-E-R-R-A, Kutera.com or Kutera Salmon. And the salmon sit there in these pens and the water keeps circulating. The water's like a stream. It's like they're always in a stream. So they're sitting there building their muscles because they're always in a current. So if the salmon gets sick or if it goes to the bathroom, it gets flushed out of that pool. And it goes through a filtration system, just like your municipality would have a filtration system. It goes through that filtration system. The water is treated. And then the water comes back around and makes the loop again. So they're claiming that their salmon can be raised without any antibiotics. And that their salmon grows like twice as fast as farmed, typical farmed salmon in open pens. Now, there's a lot of downfalls to open pens. I just mentioned the disease and the waste. Uh, sea life also gets hung up in these, um, these pens. Uh, uh, sea lions, uh, other um, uh, fish get caught up in these. 
Uh, whales can get caught up in these. This is a problem in British Columbia with, with the nets. Uh, all kinds of wildlife gets caught up in these. Now, farmers, salmon farmers, actually have the right to, uh, to um, it's open, it's open. They actually have the right to destroy any predators. So if a sea lion comes onto you know, the nets, near the farm, whatever, um, they have to actually have the right to go out there with a gun and just shoot away and not worry about getting in trouble of killing species because that's their right as their farm based, uh, in most countries because the government's there to protect their, their industry and think this is a viable industry. So um, whether it's from Norway, whether it's from Scotland, whether it's from Chile, whether it's from uh, 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 New Zealand, whether it's from um, wherever, it's the open pen that's the issue. The open pen, whether it's Canadian, North, uh, West Coast, or East Coast Canadian, Bay of Fundy, whatever they tell you, uh, it's Lock Du Hart, um, Cook Aquaculture's uh, one, True North Salmon. It's all open pen. It's all the same thing. They're going to get sea lice when you put stuff like that close together. They're going to get disease. And some of these salmon farms, like True North says, well, we don't use antibiotics. Well, no, you don't need antibiotics for lice. Lice you treat with a harsh chemical called slice. Slice is not an antibiotics. It's a chemical. So, yeah, you don't need antibiotics to treat the salmon because uh, you're going to use other things. So it's, it's one of those things where... For example, like pork. When you raise pork, you're not allowed by the U.S. government to add hormones into it. Um, so when a, when, a, when you see a pork label and it says hormone-free, no hormones added, yeah, they're just following the law. They're not doing anything special, folks. It's not like they went out of their way to avoid hormones. They can use antibiotics, but they're not allowed to use hormones. So that's the deal with that. Um, so look for what type of farm. Now, believe me, you're not going to find open, uh, closed containment systems. Really, it's too far in between. That's something you're really not going to find when you go to a restaurant or to a or to a, a fishmonger or to a store. So don't let them fool you. Uh, speak up, say something, and uh, support the wild salmon. Alaska has a beautifully managed system. Uh, they work off of quotas. Now, I've seen actually like Russian salmon um, at like Shoprite here in like the middle of winter, like in. Uh, or near Christmas week, uh, Russia has, really has no quotas. Uh, they just, just fish away and do what they want. Uh, the same thing with their king crab. So you can buy king crab uh, that most people are say it's Alaskan. Well, yeah, it's either caught in Russia or in the U.S. in, uh, in, um, in Alaskan waters. The biggest difference is it's twice the price in America because we have a quota system and we don't catch as much as Russia. Russia just decimates that area and, and kills the stock back to nothing. Uh, and then they either process it there or ship it to China. And we can ship it to China too, by the way. A lot of Alaskan uh, crab processors ship the product to China. Do you know uh, calamari here from the East Coast? To ship it round trip to China to process and send it back is like 20 cents a pound. It's a bargain because you're not paying a U.S. worker $15 an hour. Uh, you're paying some Chinese person like 50 cents an hour. So it's cheaper for these companies to send it to China package it, process it, and send it back, and they're killing American jobs, uh, decimating American jobs. And part of the problem is the government's allowed them to do that, and they've, they've, they've opened up the trade to do that. And the other problem is us Americans are cheap people when it comes to food. We don't like to spend money on food, so we'll buy the cheapest thing. We'll go to restaurants and we'll complain that one restaurant's $3 more for their salmon than the other. When We don't even know know what the ingredients are going into it, each dish, but yet they're the first, well, this guy down the street is cheaper than you. And restaurant tours, this drives me crazy. They actually say, my burger's going to be 10 bucks, and I, I do some consulting, and I'm like, well, why is your burger 10 bucks? I don't think you're making money on that. Well, I have to be 10 bucks because the guy down the street's $10.50. I want to undercut him. Well, you want to undercut him? You want to outmarket him and get 12 bucks for your burger because that's what you need to get to make a living and cover your costs and pay your staff a fair wage. Um, so you need to market better and tell a better story and get the proper dollar for it. And, you know, so that's a whole other topic, marketing. And you can go to 50mistakes.com, my website there. So, yeah, open pen versus uh, closed containment system. That's the choice you need to make when it comes to any farm salmon out there. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. If you like my vids, please hit like, subscribe, leave a comment, a question. I'll be...